This has been a pterosaur week for me, so I thought I'd share with you a couple of cool fossils that were brought to my attention. These were awesome flying reptiles of the Mesozoic, and we recently learned just a little bit more about them. First up, last week, Science published an article about a remarkable fossil discovery in China. Hundreds of pterosaur eggs. I like this reconstruction of this particular species. Rat-faced needle-fanged winged monsters vomiting fish into the gaping jaws of their scurrying insectile young. Isn't that cute? The picture implies brooding and prolonged care for hatchlings, which may have been true, because what's missing in this image are, are hundreds more rat-faced needle-fanged monsters in a great mob of flapping membranous wings and sharp claws. The recently discovered fossils in China imply that there were large breeding sites with numerous eggs, a colony or rookery. That's revealed by this amazing accumulation of eggs found in one place. This is what we're talking about, a slab of rock with between 200 and 300 eggs jumbled up together. What this suggests is that there's a major nesting site that was scoured by storms that swept all the eggs and a few juveniles and adults into a river where they were eventually deposited in a bank of silt. So this hunk of sandstone is not the preserved nesting site. It's the flotsam from a storm that demolished a nesting site. Most of the soft-shell leathery eggs are damaged and filled with sediment, the embryos lost, but a few, about 16, still have embryo bones inside. It's a real pterosaur catastrophe, and it happened multiple times. There are at least four layers, or four separate storms, in this deposit. There are no intact embryos here. However, the bones do tell a story. These embryos have incompletely ossified skeletons, so if they were near to hatching, which is in question, uh, they certainly wouldn't have been able to fly and might have depended on parental care for some period of time. The hind limbs were further along in development than the wings, which suggests that they may have been capable of walking when hatched, but needed more time to develop flight. To me, though, what's most interesting about these fossils is that they reveal these were not solitary animals, but that they laid their eggs in large, densely populated nesting grounds. There were whole pterosaur communities living in China a hundred million years ago. Now, this fossil bed is revealing because it's telling us something about the population of pterosaurs rather than the details of their embryos. But this next one flips that around. This is a single solitary egg from this weird creature from the lower Cretaceous of Argentina. You might notice what's odd about these animals. Their lower jaw contains about a thousand long, thin teeth. Yes, those are actually teeth. Forming a fringe that was most likely used as a filter feeding mechanism. It almost certainly lived like modern flamingos, using that weird tooth comb to strain lakes and streams for small arthropods. It was a successful beast. We have hundreds of adult specimens, so it's one of the best represented pterosaurs. We also have an egg, a very nice egg, with a nearly intact embryo inside. And here it is. Okay, it looks like a flattened jumble, more like a scrambled egg. Uh, but paleontologists have painstakingly gone through it and identified all the bits and pieces. This is the slabs. It's only half the embryo, and we also have the counter slab with the other half, so the whole assemblage can be re reconstructed. And this is almost a perfectly complete articulated skeleton of a, an embryonic ter pterosaur. Isn't that cool? Here's the counter slab and a reconstruction of the animal curled in the egg. You can see the claws of the wing adorably curled up by the head, while the wings themselves are furled by its body. And look at that curved jaw and that feathery array of teeth. It does make me think of a quote. Dead Cthulhu waits dreaming. That is not dead which can eternal lie, and with strange eons even death may die. Although it's not as ominous as it sounds, since I think if this were dreaming of anything, it would be of reaping zooplankton. Okay, so if you're looking for my sources, here are a couple of papers. 
Uh, the Wang paper on the Chinese pterosaur assemblage ought to be easy to find since it's in science, but it might be behind one of those evil paywalls. The Cadorniu paper on the Argentinian embryo is sent to me by a colleague in geology who reads that source for the geology, not the fossils. But to my surprise, it's also easy to find on Google Scholar, so go read for the details. These colorful reconstructions aren't going to give you nightmares, are they? Also, while you're reading, go check out our blog network. Uh, Free Thought Blogs hosts a lot of godless writers who are promoting a positive vision of atheism, one that values diversity, equality, and progressive ideals like science. You'll find me there on the blog called Ferungula, which no one knows how to spell, but it starts with a PH if that helps. Talk to you later.